Tom here from Lawrence Systems. We're going to talk about TrueNAS scale. And I've been talking lately about TrueNAS Core, the up and coming convergence of FreeNAS and TrueNAS into a fully open source system. But in addition to that, they're also working on TrueNAS scale. And there's been a lot of confusion and people thinking that maybe this means the end of BSD support because TrueNAS scale is built on Debian, but it doesn't. And we're going to explain why and go over some of the details of what TrueNAS scale is, why you may or may want to use it, and how the development's going on there and its current status right here in July of 2020. Before we dive into all that, let's first. If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. Now they spell it out right at the top on June 9th of 2020 of this IX Systems blog post. And I'll leave links to all this so you can uh, read through it because I'm not going to read every detail in here, but there's a lot of solid information here right from the people doing all the development. So welcome to the post OS era. There was a time in history when all that mattered was the operating system. I remember the operating system wars and they're still continuing with the distro wars for which distros did you choose. And it mattered a lot in the earlier days. It matters a lot less because of the way things are designed now and specifically because of the portability between OS platforms and they're kind of dive into all of that inside of here. So how did they enable multi-OS? This is what's really important. Middleware was updated to be OS and independent and have a clean REST and WebSockets API. Web user interface was modernized using Angular and the new APIs, so it's also OS independent. Essentially what they've done is you have the base operating system. Well, TrueNAS, FreeNAS are built on, and a TrueNAS core built on FreeBSD. But FreeBSD, for all the things it does have and great features, it does not have some of the things some people are asking for, such as Docker support. Instead, they have IO cage and jail. So the containerization systems and some of the backend things that are kernel level and will need high levels of kernel interaction are fundamentally different. So for people who want that and want a system as they refer to it as scale out for clustering and things like that, that is where you may want a Linux-based operating system. So by packaging up the base that is the middleware that makes up the system, and when you look at the way these look, you can tell, wow, they look very, very similar to each other, this one being TrueNAS Core, this one being TrueNAS Scale, that's because of that packaging and compatibility, because a lot of the, all the languages that this was written in is compatible with both base operating systems. So I don't think they're going to go Windows in case we're, we're the OS war between Windows and the uh, open source world is still going to continue on, I see, for the foreseeable feature. I don't predict there's going to be a version of this that gets ported over. So Windows is at its core. It seems terrible. But the other more popular operating systems that are more suited for this, both Debian and BSD, they've packaged it very well so it can be portable. Now, this means they don't have to end support like a lot of people seem to think for the BSD world. They can keep porting this because they do development on the core middleware applications, and then it just works on either platform. So the people who want the Debian with some of the other features, uh, containerization features, they're going to get them by running this on Debian. People who are used to the IO cage and some of the scalability features you have, and of course the rock solid history that BSD has um, of stability, you can keep running it here. And there's not a big challenge because they don't write the operating system, they write the middleware over at IX Systems. That's what they're actually supporting. Therefore, the Updates can still come from the FreeBSD side. The updates can come from the Debian side and a platform can continue to live on both. And you can have your cake and eat it too because you can choose whichever platform works better for you. So TrueNAS Scale is, uh, like I said, really neat. It stands for Scale Out, Converge, Active, Active, Linux Container, Easier to Manage. So uh, I'll leave a link to this announcement and they dive into some of the details. But what does it actually look like functional wise? Not really that functional. First thing is currently it runs close to um, 
absolute zero with a negative uh, 269 degrees. And this is running on that super micro server. I'll leave a link to that I did a review on the other day. I just had it here, so I wanted to test it. And so that's the first thing I noticed on there was, wow, it runs at an incredibly cold temperature, which obviously is just some of the bugs in it. Um, I also did load some updates and then it broke things. So I rolled it back and then I uh, went to the command line, which by the way, yes, it does run Debian. And yes, you can apt-get and update this. Um, and it pulls from the IX systems repositories here, but uh, I can guarantee you this will break things. This breaks a lot of things if you just do it from the command line. So it, like I said, very, very beta. They're predicting sometime in 2021. They don't have any exact dates. You can follow IX systems for updates. So this has a little ways to go, but things they did include, yes, from the command line, we have options for Docker. And from the command lines, they have some Gluster in here. I don't know where its development is in terms of how fully functional and if it's able to set up Gluster file systems on here or not, but that's part of the plan. You can have the ZFS base, you're gonna be able to do clustering and have Docker containers on here. And you know, it's really cool that they're doing all this. And I love the fact that we're gonna end up with all these extra features for people who wanna run it on there. Because one thing that you may have noted on this channel that I haven't covered is virtual machines. Virtual machines use the Beehive system inside of the BSD platform, which is popular for virtualization there. And in here, they're gonna be using KVM. So once again, they started on two different bases. So you'll get the one that you're looking for in terms of functionality. Now I did try creating a VM here and it just uh, hung the processor and broke. So there is still a lot of things to go. This is far from ready. Uh, matter of fact, so one of the things I noticed that isn't even in here right now is the ACLs are missing. So it does have the old style permissions. And when I try to access even a test share that I created, I get some errors sometimes. So oh, it's working now, so cool. But it is still very, very beta in terms of uh, its overall functionality. So for those asking, should I start running this right now? I'm probably gonna go with no, it's not ready for running. But if you wanna participate as a known uh, nightly, you're going to have bugs person and going to help report those bugs and everything else, that's great. Uh, so the functionality will slowly be ramping up as the development cycle continues. And it's going to go through the same testing cycles that FreeNAS and TrueNAS Core are going through uh, to coming to release. So I do think this is a great project. I do not see it taking away from uh, the stability that we're used to. And especially because as someone who's, we are full disclosure and IAC systems reseller, and we do sell these commercially to uh, businesses that are looking for really long-term support, they will be easy uh, to get that support and they're going to stay committed to the BSD base. And, you know, these are rock solid built on BSD. So it's corporate world, especially they aren't always looking for the latest features as much as stability matters a lot to them when it comes to their storage servers. So TrueNAS will be a popular storage device for a long time to come in terms of built on BSD, rock solid stability. Uh, but for those looking for some cutting edge and some new features, they're going to be able to ship TrueNAS scale. And the cool thing is, it's not like they have two platforms to develop, because as I stated, they're not writing the operating system. They've can built a container essentially around the middleware to say, all right, we can make it portable. We can develop on one group, one team working on the middleware, and then we can compile it to match either platform. You're going to get, as I said, the different virtualization machines, some of the extra features and everything else when you move over to here. So those are my thoughts on TrueNAS scale. Uh, it's like I said, really beta right now, and uh, but development's coming along. You can follow along at IX Systems, follow along in their blog posts. It's not a secret. It's all open source. Both of these platforms are still open source. They're still free. Um, that's still on the roadmap. This is all published on GitHub for those of you that have commented asking me, well, is it really open source? Yes. Uh, so that's still the business model that they have for these is still, you know, contributing back to the open source community, making all of this uh, open source. I'm looking forward to all development on there, but for stability purposes and everything, uh, I will continue on the path of recommending and using and doing lots of free NAS, true NAS videos. As a matter of fact, that's a nice thing. Once you have the interfaces the same, other than some of the back end features, when you have a front end interface the same, uh, the things I do or you learn and familiarize yourself with are going to port over perfectly fine either way. So whichever one you choose is going to be a preference based on whether or not 
a function you want or if you're a preferred Docker user. I do know a lot of people that have done a lot of work with IO Cage, so they're going to really want to stay with the BSD because they're more familiar with that platform. So the choice will still be yours to make um, in terms of you know what base OS you want to have it on, but you're going to get the same cool interface. So that's my thoughts on TrueNAS Scale. It's a cool system. I'm looking forward to development on it. And thanks. I'll leave links to where you can get to all this. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.